Hi everybody, I'm Dr. John LaPook, medical correspondent for the CBS Evening News with Katie Couric, and welcome to another episode of CBSDoc.com. I'm here in New York City outside our broadcast center for the CBS Evening News with Hannon Cohn and Ray Cordy, two paramedics who are going to help me tell you everything you ever wanted to know about ambulances. But we didn't want to freak people out by bringing me outside in a stretcher, so I'm just going to walk over to the little stretcher here, and we'll start from here. Mom, again, I'm fine. I'm perfectly fine. Don't freak out. This is just a demonstration. We're going to go up. We want to give people an idea of what exactly it's like to be in an ambulance. So I'm starting off, I'm in my apartment, and I have some pain, bottom of my chest, top of my abdomen, and what do I do? Do I call 911? If you're having pain in your chest, that could be something life-threatening. So you want to call 911 and get them involved as, as quickly as possible. While I'm waiting, what should I prepare? Okay, you want to have a list of your medications, a list of your allergies, um, your doctor's names, and your doctor's phone numbers. You might have more than one doctor. Are there times when people just are better off getting into a cab? Our standard of, of uh, response time is eight minutes. We have medicines and we have treatments that start taking care of you, start, start the medical process right then and there. When you arrive into the emergency room with the lights blaring and the sirens going, are you treated more quickly? The sickest patient need to get to a doctor fastest. So whether you come in by ambulance or you walk in, the, the nurse at the desk will do a triage and she'll determine who's the sickest patient. So I'm now flipping back into patient mode here, okay? I hate to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now I get that pain again. <laughs> do me a favor and point exactly where the pain is. Okay, now I start doing a couple things. I have my partner start getting vital signs and I start going over a, a brief physical and history with you. So I've done a little quick change, and I've gotten into something a little bit more comfortable. Uh, and the reason for that is so that Ray can have access to my arm. As I'm getting your pulse, I'm watching your chest, so I'm counting your respirations. Oddly enough, if I was to tell you I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your respirations, you'd start breathing fast or slow. Generally what I do is I, I fold this over your chest, and I, and I do both at the same time. Okay, the next step is, is getting your blood pressure. It's 128 over 82, which, okay. is, which is not bad. So not put, bad. I'm looking for a little bit better than that. Right? Okay. <laughs> I think that from the viewer's point of view, you should know that I'm listening to every word you're saying and I'm trying to read things into it. If I was, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. If you were a patient, that might actually cause you to, to be a little bit stressed and I don't want that. Well, since you complained of chest pain, okay. and we have some level of concern, to be cautious, we're going to put you on the EKG monitor right. just to make sure that your heart rhythm is not doing anything irregular that we would need to treat. Okay. If you're having chest pains, and I, I think they're cardiac, yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to start an IV on okay. you. We put a, a small needle in, into, uh, through your skin into one of your veins, and then we pull the needle out, leaving a small piece of plastic in there. Now, this is nice and soft, um, and this in your vein shouldn't cause you much discomfort uh, once it's in and once it's in appropriately. All right, so far, so good. I'm feeling good. I've still got that pain. Not really, Mom, but <laughs> for, again, for the purpose of this demo. Hannon is sitting over there so that actually the camera can see him. Normally he'd be sitting over here so he doesn't lose eye contact with me. It, it feels much faster than you are because, again, it's, 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 it's a fairly rough riding vehicle. And, and what about when you're stuck in traffic across town? What do you do about that? If, if the patient is stable, yeah. we stay in traffic. And what, um, if, what if they're not stable? If they're not stable, that's a point in time where we would use lights and sirens and appropriately pass traffic. We've reached the emergency room bay. So now, even in this simulation, it's kind of weird for me to be pulling up to this bay. Many a time have I been on this ramp, but as the physician, not as the simulated patient. And in we go to triage. So that's it for part one of this two-parter. We're now in the emergency room at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center, my hospital. And we hope you've learned something about what it's like to be in the ambulance. Next week on CBSDoc.com, we'll show you what it's like to go into the emergency room and we'll show you some of the tricks of the trade. I'm Dr. John LaPook for CBSDoc.com.